Now that we can send messages from the view model to the view, we can start to add in the code for the player to fight monsters. We want to give the player the ability to select the weapon they're going to fight with, and we're going to do that by having a combo box on the screen showing all the player's weapons. The first thing we need to do is modify the player class in the engine project. And on lines 80 and 81, I have the new property called Weapons. Its data type is a list of game items, and we're not using a getter and setter. Instead, we're saying that whenever anything accesses the weapons property, it's going to return the inventory items where the item is a weapon. And then we have this dot to list at the end of the where, at the end of the link statement, so that we can force this to actually materialize the results of the where. Something you need to watch out for with link statements is sometimes the statement doesn't actually finalize. It doesn't do the final thing and get the results until you actually call to list or something else. This is called deferred execution. It actually waits to execute the link query until it's really needed and this to list forces it to be needed. And if we look at the inventory property, we see that's an observable collection of game items, and the weapons is just a list of game items. The observable collection automatically notifies the UI with a property changed event if any items get added to or removed from the inventory, but the list does not do that. So we're going to need to raise a property changed event to notify the UI whenever the weapons list would change. And we're going to do that in this new function on lines 93 through 98, the add item to inventory. So now instead of directly adding something to this inventory property, we're going to call add item to inventory, pass in the item, then this function will add it to the inventory and it's going to raise the property changed event for weapons. So the UI will know, hey, we've got some new items in the inventory, maybe we have some new weapons. Another nice feature of adding items through this function is if we ever want to do anything like control the amount of weight that a player can have in their inventory, we can do that here in this function. But for right now, we're just going to use it to control adding items to the inventory property and then raising the property changed event for the weapons so the UI knows if it needs to update the combo box. For the next step, we need to modify the item factory in the engine project in the factories folder. Currently, in the item factory class, when we want to create a new game item, we call this create game item function on line 25. And what we have this function do before was it, it would look in the standard game items list, find the first one where the ID matches, and then it would clone that object and return that. The problem is it was returning it as a game item and not as a weapon, not as the subclass. So if we created a weapon through here and returned it, it would use the clone on the game item class because that's all it cares about. That's all it knows that it's a game item. And we need to tell it to use the clone function on the weapon class so that it includes some of the extra weapon information. So now what we do is we look in the standard game item collection, find the first one where the ID matches, get that as our standard item, if that's not null, so if we did find an item, then we check to see, is that item a weapon? If it is a weapon, then what we're going to do is cast it as a weapon. That's what the standard item as weapon means. And then we put that in parentheses. So now when we use IntelliSense and hit the period, we see the functions and the properties that are available for a weapon and not just for a game item. So now when we have dot clone on line 33, this uses the 
dot clone function from the weapon class. Whereas down on line 36, if we hover over the dot clone function, we see that it's using the one from the game item class. This is important because the clone function for the weapon class, if we go to that one, we see that it instantiates a new weapon and it includes the minimum damage and maximum damage. Whereas the clone function for a game item, if we go to the code for that, it doesn't have any sort of minimum damage and maximum damage because it's treating it just as a standard game item and not as a weapon with the extra properties. So that's why we need to change this, this function in our factory class to use the clone function for the weapons specifically. Otherwise, when this returned the game item, it would just return it as a game item and we wouldn't have a minimum damage and a maximum damage for the weapon. Now that we've added the ability for a player to have a weapon in, in their combat, it's probably fair to give the monster a way to fight. So we're going to need to make some changes to the monster class and to the monster factory. The first thing we'll do is go to the monster class and add two new properties here on line 21 and 22. They're integer properties and it's minimum damage and maximum damage. For right now, monsters are just going to fight with their claws or their teeth or their hands. Uh, in the future, we may add the ability for monsters to have weapons, but right now we'll keep it simple. And that's what these two properties will represent. If a monster bites you, if a snake bites you, this is the minimum damage it can do and the maximum damage it can do. To populate these properties, we'll go to the constructor for the monster class, and we're going to add two new parameters, integer parameters for the minimum damage and the maximum damage. And then inside the constructor, we'll add two new lines to take the parameter values and set them to the property values. So now the monster objects will have a way to actually fight back. And since we've changed the constructor parameters for the monster object, we need to go into the monster factory and pass in values for these parameters. So in the monster factory, for all the monsters, I've added a couple new parameters in here with the minimum damage and the maximum damage. So when we create the monster object, now we know how much damage the monsters can do. Next, we'll modify the user interface so that we can actually display the combo box drop down with all the player's weapons and have a button for the player to attack. So we need to modify inside the WPF UI project the main window.xaml and the main window.xaml.cs. First, we'll look at the main window.xaml and I've added some new code in lines 212 through 237. We've got a new grid here for all the combat controls. For the grid, we'll set the visibility based on whether or not the game session has a monster or not. So if the player is at a location with a monster, has monster will be true and we'll make this grid visible. If the location does not have a monster, has monster will be false and this grid will be invisible. We have uh, two rows and three columns here. And I'll display a combo box, which is a drop down box. It's going to be in row zero, column zero. The item source is going to be the current player weapons property. So this is going to show all the player's weapons. The selected item is going to be the current weapon, which is a property we're going to add in the game session class. And we're going to, going to display the weapon's name. And when the player selects a weapon, we're going to know what its ID is. That's how we'll look up the weapon to see which one's being used. And then we've got a new button here, kind of like the movement buttons. The button will say use, and the when the player clicks on the button, it's going to run the function onClick attack monster, 
which is going to be in the mainwindow.xaml.cs. So let's take a look at the mainwindow.xaml.cs. And here on lines 46 through 49, we have our new function here on click attack monster, which is just going to call our game session object. And we're going to create a new attack current monster function in the game session class. Because remember, we don't want to keep any code here in the, in the UI project. We want this all to be in our view model or, our, or in our models. So our next step will be to go into the game session class and actually add this attack current monster function. But before we get into the code for the attack current monster function, we want to do a couple of things. First up on line 57, we want to make sure we have this current weapon property. The data type is a weapon. So that way we're going to know what's the current weapon that the player has selected. And just to make things fair in the game session constructor, I've added lines 107 to 110. And it says if the current player does not have any weapons, so we're going to check the current player's weapons property. And if there are not any items in that list, then we're going to add an item to the inventory and it's going to be game item 1001, which is a pointy stick. So now the player will always have something to fight with. And now we can actually write the code to do some combat. First, we're going to do something called a, a guard clause. That's where you check to make sure that the values exist that are going to be needed in the rest of the function. And here we're going to say, if the current weapon is null, then we're going to raise a message, send this message to the UI, saying you must have a weapon to attack. And then we'll return from this function. So we're not going to try to fight if the player doesn't have a weapon selected. And uh, another name for this guard clause is an early exit, because we're saying we're not going to do this whole function here if this condition is true. We want to get out of this function right away. But if the player does have a weapon, then we're going to go to line 174, call our random number generator, and get a number between the minimum damage of the current weapon and the maximum damage of the current weapon. For right now, we're going to assume that the player always hits the monster. We're going to make some changes in the future where we have a, a more complex combat. So maybe the monster attacks first, maybe the player misses, maybe we can have some adjustments for um, if the player has a, a spell on them or if they have a, an enchantment on their weapon. But for right now, we're just going to do a random number between the minimum and maximum damage for their weapon. If the damage is zero, we're going to raise a message saying you missed the whatever the current monster's name is. So it will say you missed the snake. If the damage is not zero, then we're going to modify the current monster's hit points by subtracting the amount of damage. And we'll raise a message saying you hit the monster for however many points of damage. Then we need to check to see if the player killed the monster, if the monster has zero hit points or less. And that's what we do in lines 187 through 207. We say, if the current monster hit points are less than or equal to zero, then we're going to raise a blank message, just add a little space in the user interface. And then we'll just raise a message saying, you defeated the monster. We're going to increase the current player's experience points by however many reward experience points the monster had. And we're going to raise a message telling the player how many experience points they received. On lines 195 and 196, we'll do the same thing with the gold. We're going to increase the player's gold and raise a message. Then on lines 198 through 203, we're going to look at each item in the monster's inventory. 
we're going to call the item factory and create a new instance of the game item for each item. And we're going to add that to the player's inventory and raising a message saying you received whatever. You received one rat tail, you received one snake skin, whatever the monster had on them. And then the final thing we'll do if the current monster was killed is we're going to get another monster to fight. So we're going to call this get monster at location function which looks to see what the monsters are at the location, instantiates a new one, and sets that to the current monster property so the player can fight another monster. And if the current monster was not killed, then we have this else condition down here from lines 208 to 232. Now it's the time for the monster to fight back. And this code looks pretty much like the previous code. We're going to get, uh, we're going to call the random number generator and find out how much damage the monster did based on their minimum damage and maximum damage properties. If that value is zero, we're going to raise a message that the monster attacked but missed the player. If the damage is not zero, then we're going to subtract some damage from the player's hit points and raise a message that the monster hits you for however many points. Then we need to check to see if the player was killed. So if the current player's hit points are less than or equal to zero, we're going to raise a message with a blank line, just to give a little space in the UI again. And we're going to say, the monster killed you. Since the monster doesn't get any experience or gold or loot, we don't need to add any of that extra code that we had for when the player defeated the monster but we are going to have a couple extra lines here, 229 and 230, where we're going to set the player's current location to zero minus one, which are the coordinates for the player's home. And we're going to set the player's hit points to whatever their level is times 10, basically heal them. So we send them home and they get healed and they can go out and fight again. Now the final thing to do is to test this so we'll run the program and move to a location with a monster. Here we have our snake and here's our combo box with weapons. I'm going to select a pointy stick and I'm going to use that. And we see you hit the snake for two points and then the snake hits you for one point. And if you also notice over here in this snake, monster section we have current hit points is now two it used to be four now i'll use the weapon again you hit the snake for one point and the snake hit you for one point the current hit points for the snake is now down to one our current hit points are down to eight hit use again and we defeated the snake we get five experience points one gold and one snake skin here, over here in our player stats, we see our XP is now 5. Our gold has gone up by 1. And if we look down in our inventory, we now have a snake skin. So now we have all the code in place for the player to fight a monster, to defeat the monster and get their rewards, or to lose to a monster and get sent back to their home and get healed. In the next lesson, we're going to do some refactoring, just a little cleanup because we've added a lot of code here. And then after that, we'll start working on the quest, having the ability to get a quest at a location and complete a quest and get the quest rewards. If you're watching this video on YouTube, a link to the support page will be in the description below the video. If you're watching this on my site, You'll have all the source code there on the support page, and you can leave a comment if you have any questions, either on the support page or on the video, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.